Hi everybody, Jake the Spirit Man here. Today we are going to be talking some 1800 tequila. But before we get too far into this video, don't forget if you like this video, give me the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell for notifications, and give me comments if there's something you want to see in the future of Jake the Spirit Man. And uh, sorry guys, I haven't made a video for a little while because I had some surgery done to my face and my nose has been broken and I haven't, you know, felt like a box of fluffy ducks. So um, now I'm back at it and I'm going to be getting out videos every week. So Today we are, like I said, talking 1800, and this is a silver, or also known as a Blanco. Um, normally, you know, most of my videos, I tell you something very, uh, about a bottle that I've never tried before. Well, I have actually tried this bottle, and uh, so one day I bought a bottle, I was going to do the review on it, and I was getting a bit thirsty for some tequila, and I cracked open, long story short, that bottle is gone, so I had to buy another bottle. So I do know what this already tastes like, so it's not a complete blind taste test on this bottle. Now, remember, stick to the end of the video, give you some words of wisdom like I normally do, and I'll tell you a fun fact about this 1800. So, this bottle here is very interesting to me. It's, it's a pretty mainstream bottle. You can find it almost everywhere. It's not uh, anything too fancy. The bottle doesn't have too much style to it or anything like that. But one of the things, when I cracked into this bottle here, being uh, Blanco especially, it reminded me of a time that I was in Jalisco, Mexico, the region where tequila is made, and I bought this bottle of... Um, uh, I think it was called uh, Rycea, Rycea, and it's made with agave, but it's made a little bit differently, made a bit more like they make um, mascal, but it's all black market. This was, uh, you know, like a moonshine that I bought in a small fishing village. I bought a little bottle and, a, and, a, and it was in glass, and I'm sure people have bought uh, Rycea in Mexico before, and some of it can be probably terrible and some of it's good because it's not, it's not policed. It's kind of a black market product. Anyways, the taste of that reminded me a lot of this. And um, one of the interesting facts about that was that uh, it, it came in at 60% that bottle and it was or 120 proof. Um, so I had to water it down to get the, the flavors back to kind of 40% alcohol. But when I bought this bottle here, I was not going into it with any, I just bought it because, you know, I review booze. And uh, so let's crack this bottle open. I'll kind of explain something to you about, it's very interesting about this bottle compared to some other, um, Blancos that I've tried in the past, and I do love a good Blanco. But the interesting thing about this 1800 is, let's crack her open, pour a little bit in here. It, it is, um, like I said, you can pretty much buy this at every liquor store. Uh, it's a pretty mainstream tequila. But the, when you taste this tequila, you smell that smoky flavor, and that's what the, how they make kind of mascal and uh, ricea. It is. Um, it has that smoky, beautiful flavor. So if you don't like smoky, kind of peaty booze, this might not be for you, but I love it. And so, yeah, you can taste that. You really taste the agave, but you taste that smoky peat flavor, which I, I think is amazing. I think it's one of the better actual Blancos for that flavor. And um, well, I do have the, the 1800 here. Reposado that I have done a review on before too, and I'll compare the two side by side. If I can get a little bit to pour out, come on. I don't like the pourers on these things. That's one thing I can say that I don't like. Come on. Okay. I don't know what's wrong there. I'm not supposed to have this today. Let's see what's going on. Now, if anybody knows why these things don't pour very well. Let me know in the comments, please, because I'm having a hell of a time getting anything out of this thing. Uh, I don't know. Okay. I have no idea. Please send me a comment. Let me know how to get the booze out of the bottle. There we go. Okay. So this here is now the Reposado of 1800. A little water to cleanse my palate there. Now... See, it doesn't, it, you can smell the oak in, in it, quite sweet, it's got a lot of the sweetness of the oak in there, but to me, it's lost its tequila kind of agave flavor, so, you know, between these two bottles, most people say, oh, Reposado or Anejos are better, but this for flavor-wise is a far superior product, I believe, so if I had to pick one, I would have to pick the... Um, you know, the, the Blanco is uh, better than the Reposado and uh, same product. And actually, the funny thing was in the liquor store here in Australia, they were actually the exact same price. Normally, you pay a higher dollar for Reposados than you do Blancos, but they were actually the exact same price. So 
I told you I'd tell you some words of wisdom today. Today, my words of wisdom are, um, you know, we're going through a hard economic time around the world right now. A lot of people are struggling in businesses. So I got an interesting story to tell you about the game. Actually, it was about a guy, and he was hit the big Great Depression in the 1930s in the U.S., and he would promised his wife that, you know, he was going to be a rich man and a millionaire back in those days, which is quite wealthy. And uh, he lost all his money. It was next to impossible to find jobs. And he decided that uh, he was kind of giving up on life. And his wife said, no, you know, there's still a way to do this. Uh, the guy's name was Charles Darrow, and he actually took a game that had already been invented in 1904 with a different name and changed it, tweaked it a little bit, and he called it Monopoly. He took this game and he took it to Parker Brothers to try to sell it. They actually knocked him back and they said, no, we don't want it. It's too complicated. It takes too long to play. And so he started making the game himself and started selling it, and Parker Brothers started to see how well it did, and they actually bought the game off him and gave him royalties for it, and he actually made a million dollars off of that game. And he was the first person to ever make a million dollars off of a board game, especially in the 1930s. And he lived his dream. So he retweaked something. You know, his wife wouldn't give up on him. He decided to change. And maybe he wasn't able to buy real real estate, but he made a game where you buy and sell real estate. So that's the important lesson for people to learn. And my fun fact for 1800 booze is this 1800. One thing that's interesting about it, how it got its name, is in... 1800, exactly that year, was the first year they ever started aging tequila in oak barrels. So they went with it and started calling it 1800. So don't forget, everybody, if you like this video, please give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Give me comments. And it is middle of summer in Australia, and I'm sweating like a pig right now. So I'm going to have a swim, and uh, I will put out another video in one week. So like I said, keep your stick on the ice. See you in the next video.